John Lusk here of Lusker 3 Adventures. Serious testing, successful hunting. Today I'm testing another head by B3 Archery. They put out some really cool stuff. And, uh, and this is the B3 RD2. So kind of a different type of design in some ways and similar in others. And I'm really eager to put it to test using my protocol for 2024. And for a detailed description of that, please check out the video that I posted earlier this year called 2024 Broadhead Test Process. And it'll walk you through all the different tests I do and why I do them, how I quantify them, and it will catch you up to speed. For all the shooting, I'm using my Elite Era compound bow that's just uh, fantastic. And then for the accuracy testing, I'm using my Killer Instinct SWAT X1 crossbow. For all the arrows, I'm using uh, Bishop Archery arrows and bolts. Let's zoom on in here and check out this RD2 and then put it to the test. Here's a good look at the RD2, and at first glance you might think it's just another Rage and think, why do we need another Rage-looking broadhead? There are some similarities with this slip cam design, but there's quite a few differences to note as well, and I'll go through it. Uh, first of all, the materials. You've got a ferrule, um, pretty thick ferrule with a really stout tip that's made out of titanium uh, that's stronger than, uh, than, than some steels, a good number of steels, but it's especially good for its... Uh, weight to strength ratio and then you've got the uh, the blades that are 440c stainless steel so really high quality stainless steel with that and they're 0.039 inches thick so good thick blades the overall length beyond the edge of the of the arrow is 1.37 inches and the total cut the cutting diameter is two inches for the blades and then this tip is uh is pretty thick as well and that adds an extra 0.3 inches, kind of functioning like a bleeder, if you will. So the way this works is there's no O-rings, there's no retention clips or anything. When, uh, when this is impacted, when the broadhead impacts a medium, these blades, which are just held in place by like a, like a dimple, just by friction, they're held in place, they slide back into their full cutting diameter there. And you'll notice as well that the they're offset. Okay, do you see how they're not in the same plane? Like this one, this this top one is here, the bottom one is here, and there's 0.3 inches separating them. So that's going to create quite a different wound channel than if they're in the same plane. And again, it's got this really uh, stout chisel tip here. So I like the way that there's no O-rings like that. And this is a pretty seems like a pretty uh, strong mechanism to hold the blades in place. We'll have to see how that pans out. For resharpening, I would use the Stay Sharp Guide replaceable blade sharpener. I think that would work really well on this. Look forward to putting it to the test and seeing how it performs. The RD2 got the solid nine ring. It took 157 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 10 on a 10 point scale, plus a bonus for being under the threshold of 200. It penetrated six and three quarter inches. Here's the entrance hole. The blades opened really well on impact, even on this soft surface, and they remained open throughout the entire penetration. Pretty cool to see those offset blades as well. It took an additional 85 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is an 8.3 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 47 layers, which is a 6.71 on a 10 point scale. Here it is just after two shots through the MDF. Normally I take three shots and then rate it, uh, but it only made it through two. That, that one blade just broke apart on the second shot. So I won't be shooting it into the steel plate, but I will shoot it into the concrete. Here it is after all the durability testing, and you saw that one of the blades broke off in the steel plate, but in the cinder block, the, uh, the ferrule and that tip did quite well. So what'd you think? 
you know, like a lot of broadheads, uh, thing, everything's a trade-off. That's not the case in every broadhead, but in a lot of broadheads, there's some things that are really cool about this broadhead. I like the retention system. You got to make sure you get it in place, but you know, you don't have to mess with O-rings or, or clips or anything like that. I like that. I like the slip cam design. I like the blades um, being in different planes, offset blades. That just makes a nice, wicked wound channel. Uh, I like the flight overall, pretty compact and low profile. Um, and, and then when it comes to, oh, the blades themselves, the sharpness and the edge retention was really pretty good with that. The penetration was a bit wanting, but you know, it has a pretty big size cut. That happens sometimes with rear deploying uh, mechanicals like that. Uh, the durability was, was definitely a weakness, like many heads that are similar to this. Strong ferrule, but, uh, but a little bit weaker blade connection. But you check out the source score sheet and see if it might be a good fit for you and your setup and your hunting needs, the animal that you're pursuing and so forth. And I detail how it did in each of the tests in the video description. But stay tuned for the overall scores as well as the cumulative score and the corresponding Lusk grade. And also please stay tuned for a list of all my discount codes just so I can pass on savings to you. I'm getting more and more of those and I, I put them in a slide at the end of every video, but then I can't update the slide after the video is posted, but I can update the video description. So I'm adding more and more and I keep them alphabetical in there so you can check and see if a head you like has a discount code for it or something like that. But hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you next time.